Glory to the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. I am David Eidbonner, and this is David Eidbonner Ministries. It's a short but very important message I'm going to be uh, sharing with you. Not every act that produces results is going to be beneficial to you or to me. Only that which is in agreement with the will of the Father will be of benefit to you and of benefit to me. The end does not always justify the means. In fact, that saying the end justifies the means is wrong. You may get what looks like results. You may actually get results. But when it is achieved with the wrong motive and the wrong process, it will be detrimental to you. I want to read Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17 from verse 1 to 7. This is an example that we should learn from. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide with me? Therefore do you, wherefore do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted for water, and the people murmured against Moses, and said, Wherefore is this that you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children, and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto these people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with you the elders of Israel, and your rod. Wherewith where you smote the river, and take in your hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there upon the rock in Horeb, and you shall smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massah, and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Now God gave an instruction to Moses here to stand with the elders of Israel and strike the rock, and water would come out. Which Moses did. Water came out, the people drank. Then let's look at Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20 from verse 1 to verse 13. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh, and, Mi and Miriam died there, and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chilled with Moses and spoke, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. And why have you brought up this congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us in unto this evil place? It is no place of seed or figs or vines or pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the, of the congregation. And they fell on their faces and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying take the rod now take note of this he said take the rod 
and gather you the assembly together, you and Aaron your brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock. So you shall give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron, Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. Now, the first time God said, strike the rock in the presence of the people. Moses did that. Water came out. The second time God said, speak to the rock. Moses, because of his anger at that moment, missed the instruction. And rather than speak to the rock, the first time God said, strike. This second time God said, speak. Rather than speak to the rock. The Bible says he struck the rock not once, but twice. And water came out, the Bible says, abundantly for the people to drink. The first time he acted in the perfect will of God, water came out. The second time he went contrary to the instruction of God, water came out. You may say the important thing is that water came out. That's not how God sees it. God has his purpose and things have their significance. The rock represented Christ. The first time Moses struck the rock, water came out. Speaking of Christ's crucifixion. Remember, the Bible says when the Roman centurion pierced his side, blood and water came out to let the people know he was the rock that gave them water. Because if you break a rock, you are not going to see water. The Bible says that those who have tasted of the powers of the world to come, who have um, had very close experience with God, who have walked with God, if they backslide, it's not possible to renew them to repentance, seeing that they crucify the Son of God a second time. So by Moses striking the rock again, rather than speaking to the rock, it had its significance. I can go on a long teaching about it. That there are some people, depending on their work with God, not everyone, depending on someone's work with God, if the person backslides, he may not, he will not be able ever to repent. And that is why there are some powerful ministers of the gospel, some very influential believers, when they backslide, even if they are still in ministry, they sink very low in all courts. They use witchcraft and manner of things. But you wonder, but this man walked with God closely for a while. There's a level you should not fall from. That when you fall from that level, you can never come back. So there are some popular ministers and not popular ministers that have missed it eternally. Because by their actions, they crucify unto themselves the Son of God a second time. So I'm not going to go into that teaching, but I'm just showing you that Moses did not realize the importance of following the instruction to the latter because he was angry at that time. The people drank the water, but the minister had his ministry cut. 
Because Moses was to take the Israelites into the promised land, but instead, he could only take them to the border of the promised land. And he had to die. His ministry was cut by that action. So be careful with what you do. As a believer, be careful. Don't use carnal means to achieve spiritual results. As a minister of the gospel, don't use gimmicks, blackmail, and manipulation to get money from people, to get them to do things. And you say the important thing is that they give. They may be blessed for giving, but God will judge you for what you have done. So the means by which you achieve your goals is just as important as you achieving those goals. So brothers and sisters out there, be careful, especially those of you in ministry. Don't say this is what God wants us to do. I'm going to find a way of getting it done. I will use, you may call it wisdom. There are different kinds of wisdom. The Bible says there's wisdom from above and there's wisdom from hell. There's wisdom from this earth. So you may use wisdom, but whose wisdom? Whose brand? Be sure that you follow the instructions of God and you do things the way that are right in the sight of God, according to scriptures. Do not use any means to achieve good things. Your good intentions would not erase or um, undermine the sensitivity of your process to achieve your goals. Don't think you can achieve it and God will just see, oh, you achieved this thing. He wants to know how you did it. So whatever you are doing, remember, the means is just as important as the end. And not that the end justifies the means. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you.